welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm David Bach. I'm a professor here at IMD and Dean of Innovation and Programs. I'm a professor of strategy. I'm so thrilled to be here uh, with Professor Peter Larange, the honorary president of IMD, uh, the person who very much made IMD as, as we know it and, 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 and cherish it. Uh, and somebody I've been uh, admiring for a very, very long time. So I'm delighted that we can exchange some views on executive education, uh, where, it, where it's been, where it is, and where it's going. Thank you, David. And, uh, and just, uh, it's not quite true that uh, what you said about me, but I was in charge of IMD for 15 years. Uh, I spent some time at Yale, just like you did true, also. True. And of course, my heart is with IMD, just yeah. like. I'm sure your heart is also. Absolutely. You've also done a lot of things since you left IMD. One of the things you did is founded the Lorange Network. And a special welcome to all the Lorange Network community members who are joining us today. We're so thrilled that the Lorange Network is part of IMD, that we uh, can uh, build joint community, learn from one another, and, and, and do great things together. Um, Peter, we wanted to start... Um, with really situating executive education. There is a lot of discussion about lifelong learning, the importance of lifelong learning. And, you know, for some people that may mean, well, you do a program or two after you went to university, uh, but you recently completed not one, not two, three IMD executive education program. And, and can I share with you, with the group, what you said to me about at what age you did this? Is yes. that okay? That's so, okay. so, so one was at 78 and two were at 79. That's or two at, so uh, that's lifelong learning. So, so talk about why yeah. lifelong learning is so important and perhaps why you decided to enroll in these programs at, at this stage. Yeah, let me, that's great. I appreciate that comment and that question, David. You know, when I sold the, the LaRange network to, to IMD, I, I guess I could have gone for try to get a better price and all of that. But yeah. for me, that was not important. What was important for me was that we would get access to the various programs at a reasonable rate. And I'm saying not only me, but my entire family. Yeah. And, and, and you know, that puts some kind of, uh, should we say, a little bit of gentle pressure on us yeah. to do this because, you know, we are always busy in the Senate. But what we all felt and maybe me in particular, is that we, we know more or less quite a lot. And things are going quite well, business-wise and uh, learning-wise. But, you know, good can always be done better. Yeah. And, and, and to come to IMD to get, should we say, more inputs for the batteries. Yeah. That was important for not only for me, but for my children, my two children and, and their in-laws, my in-laws. And, and so on, so on, grandchildren, yeah. and all of this. You brought the whole family. So well, it's intergenerational learning also. That's also true. And in fact, uh, we, we met during the evenings. I have an apartment in, nearby in Puyi. And uh, every evening we met to ask, what did we learn? This, not in terms of nuts and bolts. And as I said to you earlier, I understand the difference between A and B. Yes, yes. But, uh, but you know, more at a higher level, you know. And, and it was great, you know, that insight and that insight. This was important for me, this for me, this for me. And it all became very clarifying for all of us. Fantastic. So what programs did you choose or maybe take one oh, of the three programs okay. and talk a little bit about why it helped sort of spark those conversations well, in the evening among the family? Well, first of all, I took uh, alone this time. Yeah. The first one I took was this program on uh, management te and technology that yeah. uh, we are doing jointly with, with uh, MIT. Yes. And I used to be a professor at MIT, sure. so I, I have a kind of a warm heart for, for yes. that. And that program started long ago when I was in charge. And, uh, you know, for me, it was important to understand that, you know, learning seems to be so much part of these high tech companies also. Yeah. And, 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 you know, an open mind kind of learning like a sponge learning to, so that you get inspiration from other 
yeah. cutting edge companies. That was really interesting. The second program I took was uh, here I had some of my family with me. Uh, that was on, on kind of the virtual technology. Yeah. And uh, I think IMD is on in the front when it comes to all of that. Yeah. And I was just uh, very glad to take that program and see how can all of this kind of help my colleagues, my family and me to understand how to run our businesses better. Yeah. And, and the last program we took was orchestrating winning performance, which I, I think is great. Uh, who started that, by the way? Didn't you it, start? It, you started it was me. Okay. Thank you very much, right. David. But, 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 you know, it, it was amazing to kind of dig in and, and get a feel for what should we say the entire IMD faculty came up with, the entire orchestra, yeah. the entire symphony orchestra. Yes. And it was very inspirational. And, and maybe one more thing, um, you know, I met so, and we met so many interesting people. We learned from all of them, great. And that to me is super to see how IMD can be a meeting place. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so you mentioned before, and by the way, before I go to my next question, I wanna make sure uh, our audience uh, know everybody who's connected from all over the world. If you have questions, uh, there is a function um, <coughs> on your screen where it says, uh, I believe it says Q&A, uh, and you can submit your questions there, and then they should pop up on my screen, and, and, and I'll ask them of Peter. And of course, if you have questions of me, feel free to ask those too. Um, Peter, you mentioned that, you know, everybody's really busy. You know, your kids are busy. Yeah. You're a busy guy. What did you do to create the mental space to be ready for learning? How, how did you prepare? You know, how, how did you make sure you could really take advantage of, of the opportunity to maybe slow down a little bit, to be challenged, to do some sense making? Well, I, I think that for me, and, and I think this is true also for my children, uh, we all logged in yeah. and looked at a lot of stuff mm -hmm. that uh, was available from IMD mm -hmm. and from other places uh, virtually. Yeah, and and you know a lot of that was a matter of inspiring ourselves through virtual inputs. Yeah, and frankly, frankly speaking, that saved us a lot of uh, should we say ground time. Yeah, you know? and we were up to speed when we came here. Yeah, and uh, ready to dig in. So this is one of the things that is so exciting about technology yeah. that, you know, you don't come on Monday morning and they give you a no. big binder. And by the time no. you show up, you've already engaged, you know, who else is part of the program. Yeah, yeah. You've met your faculty virtually. Materials are available. Excellent. It was so good. Yeah. In fact, there was no binders. Yeah. And no binders when we came here either. Yeah. It was all a matter of using our, yes. our web page, yes. the IMD's web pages. And yes. Where we linked up. Yeah. Perfect. Wonderful. You mentioned that in the evening you would huddle with your family. Yes. And what are some other things that you did maybe during the program to make the learnings most meaningful to you personally and to your friend? Did you keep a journal? Did you have sort of an idea log? What are some other tricks that you may have used? Well, we, for me personally, it was very much a matter of trying to understand that I had certain viewpoints yeah. that I thought maybe these are some answers. But then as I was listening in the dialogues and took part of the dialogues, both in the class and in the corridors yes, afterwards sure. and in between, I realized that there are many ways to see things and many of them are perhaps correct, that no, no one answer is yeah. correct. And to me, that was the most important yeah. thing, David, that it gave me much more of an appreciation of the fact that it was a phenomenon that I was studying, yeah. that I was dealing with, debating with others and myself, rather than this is it, A is A, B is B. Yeah. No, no, no. It was a matter of A is B and B is C. Yeah. And it all, I don't know when it came together, but I felt it came together. Yeah, no, the, I'm, I'm so glad you mentioned this. And, and, and maybe I'll share an anecdote. When, when I had my first role as an MBA director, um, 
almost every year, I could set the time, you know, we would open the program, classes would start. And a few days later, I would have the first engineer in my office saying, I don't understand. We've done eight of these cases so far. There's never one right answer. Something here isn't working properly, right? And of course, I would think to myself, all right, learning is happening. You're realizing that actually the process of engaging with one another and appreciating the different perspectives is in itself an important part of the learning. And I shouldn't stereotype engineers. Um, but, you know, it was a, that's very much a view where you optimize, there's one right answer. And, yeah. and so much of what makes this rich is the appreciation of different perspectives. Yes, absolutely. I, I agree. But one thing that to me is very important yeah. is that I felt that the quality of the faculty here mm -hmm. was so good yeah. that I had some sense of a strong sense of, should we say, feeling good and relaxed yes. about what the yes. faculty said. Yeah. And I think that has a lot to do uh, with this process that the faculty are credible catalysts. Yes. Not kind of somebody walking in from the street. Yes. But highly uh, selected. Yes. And uh, just a small anecdote. When I was head of IMD, I always compared myself to a, a coach of a soccer first top notch English soccer team. Yes. Where the most important job was to hire the best players. Sure. And, and I think that's a key thing. Yes. The people I met, the faculty I met, gave me a sense of feeling confidence yeah. about you know, the, the catalytic inputs I came with. Yes. And, and, and so in order to, you're quite right, it's not just that you have great participants oh. and they share their point of view. You need faculty to frame the right questions, Absolutely. to engage, to push. And, and of course, that is what sets uh, a lot of IMD faculty apart. Yeah. And frankly speaking, that's yeah. that's what it was at Yale also. Sure. As you know. sure. No, no, no. Huh? It's, uh, that's what it's, know. it's I, I mean, I remember, you know, when I was there as a student, you know, I grew up in Germany um went to Yale for college and I just couldn't believe that in the first yeah. week of the program they were interested in what I had to say Absolutely. and I thought I just got here like you you tell me and they're like no 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 we're absolutely right right um, no I mean uh, and that that's an interesting thing I think also that uh, one of one of the important elements in in today's learning terrain yeah. is that the classes are typically smaller sure and and not only that but the professor and the students, so to speak, it's not professor versus student. Yes. They're all learning together. Yes. And uh, much more of a catalytic reality. Yes. And, and I, I, I too experienced that. that. Yeah. Very much so when I came to yeah. Yale from a more traditional academic experience yes. in, in Norway. Yeah. So we have the first question from one of our viewers, which is great. Uh, M. Al Gohari is asking, what are some approaches to encourage uh, employees or staff to pursue professional development when there's a lot of workload in the company? Everybody is really busy and, and the company may have their own offering. So in, in other words, there's a lot of great education yeah. out there, um, some of it within companies. What's the benefit that you see to come together, say, in a neutral place like an IMD um, as opposed to doing learning within your enterprise? Well, I, I think that's a very important question that's being raised, by the way. And, and the way I see it is that we are all learning on the job, mm. but that's, in a sense, step one. Yeah. And, and learning on the job, it perhaps means that we start reading some book reviews, maybe even some books. Yeah. We... we log in here and there yeah learning on the job means that we 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 try to try to explore avenues to satisfy mm -hmm. our uh, our thirst for more learning and that then leads us to maybe shorter programs at IMD or maybe at other places too which kind of builds on the learning on the job yeah builds on the self-learning, right? So, so learning at IMD is not a disruptive thing. It's really part of, really part yeah. of learning on the job. Sure. So, my my response to this great question is that 
it's extremely important to stress that good can always be done better. Yeah. Learning must always go on. Uh, it's not a matter of, of, should we say, taking a degree and then forgetting yeah. and keeping on going. Yeah. It's all, it's a matter all the time to be curious. And perhaps I was 78 and 79 yeah. when I took courses. Here. Yeah. Obviously, being curious is important yeah. for, for this. And I think as leaders, we can stimulate that kind of good can always be done better. Yeah. Curiosity must lead to more curious. Yes. So this is a, a really good point, right? And perhaps this is part of also then of, of the answer to the question. We, we want leaders, we want uh, CEOs who are, uh, who embrace this idea that, yeah. that, that we must continue to learn. As you say, good can always be done better. And that learning on the job ideally is supplemented with some learning in other settings. And it's not either or, it's really both. both. Absolutely. And, and it's not a matter of uh, so much looking for this is something I don't know. Yeah. I don't know the difference between A and B. Yeah. It's not that. It's more a matter of coming to IMD and other leading schools to bring things, to pull things together. Yeah. So we've covered how you chose the programs you did with your family, how you prepared for them. You've spoken about what you did during the program, conversations in the corridors, gathering your family in the evening and comparing notes. What have you done since? How, how have you ensured that the insights remain relevant? You know, we have this famous thing often at the end of the program, what are your takeaways, right? And the whole idea yeah. of the takeaways, is you take it with you, you then implement <laughs> it. How do you make sure that that that, that sort of, excitement or emotional high that you might be on at the end of a program, whether it's physical or virtual, translates into real change in, in your practice? Well, David, here I have to say that the company I'm talking about, yeah. the, the Lourange, uh, the S. Jugelstad Invest Company, which yes. is a fairly big investment company, yes. it has about uh, 45 investments. Yes. So it doesn't really run anything. Yeah. It's more... Uh, minority sh stakes of various uh -huh. sorts, but but here it's a matter of uh, trying to, should we say, inject uh, myself or my children, trying to inject themselves to, should we say, yeah. stimulate where it's needed. Yeah. But I would say what I did beyond that was yeah. to to I've read now about fifteen thousand pages. I read about more than sixty books and uh, put together a, a series of 60 plus book reviews, uh, trying to understand how this learning I got can be added to. And, and then I have uh, done some 25 interviews with senior executives. And um, I'm putting that together, together with Karin here. And um, the idea then is that uh, somebody, my children, myself, somebody else yeah. can study what I want within this. Yeah. And, and then if they need more, they can actually look at the entire books, not yeah. only the book reviews, yes. or look at the references behind the, the executive interviews. And if they need even more, they can come to an IMD program. Yeah. So, so I think that's an important thing that after I left, I was even seeing, I was even feeling more keen about the fact that further learning was a matter Interesting. of, of uh, understanding yes. how to hone the rocket, yes. so to speak. Yes. Hone in the rocket. Okay. So, so, so there isn't, that's, that's exciting. So it's not that having completed a program or three programs, you're like, check, done, no. right? It's no. almost like an athlete, you've stretched yourself a little bit, right? Yeah, and now yeah. like, what am I going to do with some of this new? Yeah, new I, I, skills, I have right? already signed up for several programs there you go. Next, this fall and uh -huh. uh, next year. And I will come to uh, OWP next year. Yeah. And I, I want to come to the, the board program yes. this fall. Yes. And uh, also, I want to come to the program on on bit, uh, bit currencies, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. 
Uh-huh. I, I don't understand yes. uh, much of that, but yes. uh, it, it, it right. will help me to understand. The, the, the FinTech innovation, FinTech and innovation and yeah. program. Fantastic. Yeah. So, so um, you mentioned sort of the importance of, of synthesis. You know, you're, yeah. you're taking those books, you're synth- synthesizing them. But but you're not just reading, you're you're also writing, and you mentioned this. So so one of the things that I that I admire about you is that you're as as busy and as active as as ever, you know, writing books and writing articles. So so say a little bit about um you know your 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 current interests, you know, what you're working on in terms of your own okay. research output okay. and thought leadership. What what I think is very interesting, I notice that you are a professor in no ways. Yeah. And um, and you know I I know the the person I will not mention his name sure. here, but uh, the guy who was still head of Porsche, yeah, he was promoted uh, as of September first yeah. to head up the entire Volkswagen organization. Yes, you know Audi, uh, well, Skoda, Skoda, Seat, Seat, right, all Bentley, of yes. Volkswagen, yes, Old Smith, yes, and Porsche. Yes, and and you know he uh, for, he kind of feels that it's a very much a matter of picking inputs wherever you can and suck it into your own reality, yeah. so that through cooperation you become a better innovator. Yeah, and we we looked at that compared to and and what happened with Porsche compared to another leading company which yeah. is strong in uh, yeah. in electric cars yes and then uh, we which is m- much more run in the henry ford tradition yes. we, we know best and yes. we do it ourselves best. yes and and we were stuck by if we were the person who worked with me dr harry uh, uh, dr sigwell harrison and i we felt that we saw that it was dramatic difference between the two companies yeah. in uh, in performance. Yeah, and that uh, we have an article about that that's coming in Harvard Business Review now. Fantastic. And uh, so that's probably going to lead to another book, and uh, we are looking at uh, other companies like BAS, BASF, BASF, Unilever, uh, and so on, and so on, and so on. We have about. 10 companies where we are looking at, in a sense, how innovations are stimulated through this kind of thinking. Yeah. And, and it's not so much uh, disruptive innovations the way, uh, you know, a famous professor at Harvard Business School talked yes. about it, yes. but more a matter of how do you make your entire organization more innovative? Yes. And an important part, if I understand, correctly the argument you'll be making in the piece is that innovation comes not just from doing things internally but also making the organization more permeable exactly be open-minded be open right um create what are sometimes called innovation ecosystems around organizations and 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 david we we call it (laughs) for lack of a better word i'm from norway yeah not american so uh we call it flat organizations yes and networked organizations. Yes. That very much seems to be it, kind of sucking in organizations. Yes, yes, absolutely. Now, it's fascinating how how organizations are changing, how the boundaries of organizations are changing. And maybe I'll put in a little plug. You know, we just launched a new joint program on digital ecosystems ah. because it's so important in this space that we'll do right. jointly with uh, Chong Kong Graduate School of Business, CKGSB, based in Beijing. There's a lot of really interesting Super. work happening in Asia around yeah. digital ecosystem. Yeah. Our colleague, Mark Grieven, is going to lead this on our side. We have another question here. It takes us a little bit back to, to the earlier point, but I think is highly relevant, which is um, there's a lot of content out there. There's a lot of information out there. And how do you choose from all of the great free resources or near free resources that are available? How do you choose what to focus on? What do you decide to read? Where do you go deeper? Um, how do you make sure that you use the time that you have for learning well and, and don't waste it in quotation marks on things that might not take you further? Very difficult issue. Uh, yeah. I think very important. I've been struggling with that. And 
uh, frankly speaking, uh, as I said, I've read just read fifteen thousand pages, yes. and, and uh, not just, but over the last two years. Yes. And, uh, I'm, I'm glad that it was in the last two months. Okay, yeah. so that's a okay. thing for clarifying. But, that. But, but, yeah. but I hate to say it, but uh, I, I'm fairly fast reader, so I kind of feel that some books or articles are I read, should we say, from top to the bottom. Yes, and uh, so it goes fairly fast. Yeah, I miss some things, but yes. I get a fairly good pit of the stomach feeling that this is important stuff yeah. or, or not. Yeah. And 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 that I I uh, I focus on. On top of that, I I like to listen to some commentators on uh, in the TV are saying and yeah. what what they're saying in New York Times yes. Yes. book review and things yes. like that. Uh-huh. So I, I get some inputs from there, yeah. and I have some co- colleagues around yes. both yes. Uh, both here and at Yale and at Harvard and yeah. at MIT and at yes. Wharton. Yes, it give me some hints. Right. But but you're right. It, it's uh, very easy to get lost in in this maze. Having said that, I think the next question is, you know, how do you find the right school, so to speak? Yes. And I hate to say it, but I think you have uh, some ten schools, ten business schools that you know are good. Yeah. It's like Division One in the British uh, Soccer League. Mm. And you stick to those. Yeah. So, so, so quality and, and indicators of quality, you mentioned the things that you mentioned are New York review of books, whatever they write about books is going to be very helpful. I, I pick from there. And, and then you have, you know, CNN, New York Times <laughs> resources. And then of course you say um, educational institutions yeah. and, you know, you have qual- quality matters and you can tell the difference. Yeah. So for instance, a friend of mine at, yeah. at, uh, at Wharton told yeah. me, you better read this book. Yes, yes. And, and you did, right? I did. Good. Yes. So we have a great question from Dan Ebbinghaus that I want to ask you sure, also. I know him. You do? Yes. All right. <laughs> he used to live in Singapore. Right? Okay. Where is he now? Uh, well, he didn't say that here. Maybe you can put it on the chat. I only got a question from Dan. So maybe he'll put that on the chat and we should see it on our screen in a moment. Dan, if you can hear us, uh, let us know where you're now. Uh, but in the meantime, the question Dan is asking is, what is your view on face-to-face learning, so in-person learning versus online? Is one better than the other or is it some form uh, of uh, combination that is best? I think it's a combination. Yeah. And, and frankly speaking, I think that virtual learning, which I like to call it, yes. distance learning yeah. or whatever, that's particularly good at, should we say, getting a lot of the background stuff done, sure. getting yourself up to speed, getting yourself motivated to, to being in the classroom. Yes. And then classroom learning is not the way it used to be yes but it's very much a matter of discussion based learning yes and and before the this session started yeah. we discussed how long are the, the typical sessions yes you know now they're 3 4 hours long you yeah. know yeah. and that's a reflection on the fact of the fact that it's discussions discussion discussions yeah and the professor is no longer kind of one way saying the truth yeah. person, but very similar to a conductor of an orchestra. Sure. sure. And very much synthesizing. Yeah. Which is what a good conductor does. Yeah. So combination of both, because there's different types of knowledge. There's yes, you know, so more backed on technical online lends itself a little bit better. And that frees up time then to have that in-depth yes, discussion yes. in person. Not only that, it frees up time, but it gives you a chance to do a lot more in a short period of time. So, for instance, these uh, three courses that we have discussed yeah. and I took, each of them were only one week long. Yes. But, but you know, in the old days, they would have been three to four weeks long. Sure, sure. Because... In each of them, I had prepared myself quite a lot yes. virtually. Yes. And bang, there we are. I was told that the famous PED program, right, yes. the program in executive development, that that you were very much involved in, it was ten weeks long, face to face. And well, that's... Uh, yes. Not only that, but I mean, 
listen, yeah. I, I started here before you were born. There. Yes. So when I came in 1971 for the first yes. time, when were you born by then? 75. So okay, so it, it, yeah, yes. I was correct. <laughs> and, and uh, uh, you know, at that time, the PED program was 20 weeks. Oh, my God. And it was a big debate. Should we cut it down to 10 weeks? And we did. And of course, now I, I think it's three weeks. Well, so the combination of the two, I think, is te- it's three weeks plus four. So, if, but, yes. but yes, but you can do uh, the foundations in three weeks. You're absolutely you are, correct. I meant, yeah, that's what I meant. That's what FBL is. Right? Yes. The, 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 the sugar coating on yes. the pill yeah, no, is no, no, there. No, right. And then, and then it's seven weeks. Yes. yes. But it's a combination sure. now in and classroom and, correct. and virtual. Absolutely. By the way, Dan says he's now based in Geneva. He ah. remembers you well from Singapore. And he said you were the president when he did his MBA in 1995. That's so, correct. Ter- terrific. And Excellent. his wife used to work for me. Okay. He didn't say that here. <laughs> but I'm saying but <laughs> the dialogue may be continuing on the Q&A function between you and Dan. All right. Uh, Catalina has a question, uh, which is you talked about uh, collaboration. Um, did you Have you done a, an online course uh, that included group work? Have you collaborated with folks online? Any thoughts about this? Yes, I have, uh, in the sense that um, several of the IMD, should we say, inputs, yes. virtual inputs, yes. kind of said, uh, you know, why don't you share this with a number of others who are preparing? Yes. yes. And, and I said, this is what I'm thinking. And various people, like we have now, yeah responded or came with their views and i I responded and came with my views yes so it was very much a dialogue but i didn't know exactly beforehand i didn't know who who were who yes but it became kind of a bit of a community before yeah yeah, and it was a a community where people could join if they wanted yeah which is exactly what i had hoped yeah no this is i think you know what um why this moment is so exciting. I think when, uh, you know, when COVID struck IMD, as, as, as yeah. you know, uh, you know, IMD was, was just very vulnerable because our model had rested so much on bringing people together on this beautiful, on this beautiful campus yes. or IMD faculty sure. traveling to enterprises. Sure. And here we were, and we couldn't do it. And I think at first the greater use of technology seemed like a, like a stopgap measure, a second best. But of course, you know, this is IMD. And so we said, let's let's make this great. Let's aye, see aye, what aye. we can do with it. Right. Very much the spirit that you helped instill in the institution. And, um, and now, uh, you know, we're looking at this and we're saying, we can do a lot with these tools. We can start the journeys Absolutely. earlier. We continue longer. We can do the best of all worlds. And I think it's really changed how we how we do our work, how we try to I, I think it's so good what you just said there, yeah. David. And, and, and in a sense, this reality of virtuality, so to speak, it has opened up for so much new stuff. Yes, yes. But it's not either or, but it's, yes. it helps the insight. Yeah. Uh, on campus stuff becoming much yeah. more exciting too yeah and and i think this whole issue of, i mean in the old days we talked about uh, you know uh, loop learning yes we talked about arduous who used yes. to be at of course Chris at, yes, he used ideal. to be at yale yes then i went to harvard yes and uh, and we talked about edge sign at yes. mit yes. and so that Double loop, and yes, triple loop. Yes. But now this is a reality. True. And 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 you know, it's a very exciting time. Yeah. That the professor today is somebody who understands how to listen and how to catalyze. Yeah. A totally different role yeah. than the old professor who stood behind the uh, the, the pulpit and yes. said, Here are the this is today's text, so yes. to speak. Yes. Well, and 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 what our viewers and participants uh, don't know, you know, we're sitting in a fairly small uh, former breakout room here, here on the third floor of the Executive Learning Center, but there's a total of six of these rooms on this floor, 
And our colleagues are connecting with learners all around the world in sessions, right. you know, and that's happening at the same time as people are gathering face to face in person downstairs. I think this is wonderful also. And, and, and uh, as you said, uh, you have a, a new program now with, uh, with uh, Hong Kong and in Beijing. Beijing. Yes, yes. And, and again, globality is part of learning. Today. Yes. Yes. And it has to do, I mean, what makes sense in the, in Switzerland or in your yes. home country, Germany, yes. or in, in uh, South Rhodesia, as I say, you yeah. know, I'm very old. Yeah. yeah, I know. I yeah. know. <laughs> and and, uh, and uh, by the way, they also, the capital used to be called Salisbury. Oh, yeah? Yes, but that's a long time ago. <laughs> and, um, and, and, you know, today it's, it's a globality. It, it's not a matter of what's right here, there, or there, but the global inputs sure. define sure. What, what the reality is. No, and what we did at the beginning of the session and asked people where they were connecting exactly. from in Japan and Saudi Great. Arabia and you know the UK. And I mean, this is now the reality of some of the yeah. learning here. Yeah. Latest update from Dan, you have great memory. Annette actually worked with you. She's going to be at IMD tomorrow. Wow. So I'm not this here. Is, this is the reality <laughs> of the blended lives that we're all, uh, that we're all living. Um, let me just see. There was one other question here. So um, you, um, you, you've spoken a lot about the importance of, of uh, lifelong learning. Um, and um, there, there is a, there's a question here um, about how that intersects uh, with diversity of participants. Um, so, yeah. you know, a, a lot of sort of more yes. senior executives may have grown up in a world where, um, you know, women were often underrepresented in settings, Absolutely. Um, you know, where, where, Absolutely. where there's a lot of group things. So Absolutely. what role can lifelong Absolutely. learning provide as a corrective to that and actually broaden perspectives by celebrating diversity? I, I think this is a key point. Yeah. I mean, I see diversity as partly a matter of sex, yeah. partly a matter of age, yes. partly a matter of nationality, yes. partly a matter of professional backgrounds. Yes. But, 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 you know, I was struck about how should we say all of this is mixed in a yes. in my opinion in a yes. good way yeah. in Porsche where you really see a very flat organization. Sure. I don't mean flat in a non-inspiring sense. Sure, sure, sure. Organizationally spread out. Yes. And 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 you know, diversity seems to add to that, yeah, as opposed to the more conventional hierarchical organization where you often have all male, yeah. all the U.S. all German, yeah, going yes, up the yes, hierarchy, yes. which is not the way yeah, really high-performing organizations seem to work. Yeah. And by the way, I see that in in the various investments that yeah. uh, that uh, the uh, SEO Gustav investment is making. As I mentioned, we have around forty-five investments, and and I can see those companies where we tend to work with, should we say, companies which, are, which have a healthy diversity. Yes. So for you as an investor, yeah, that I can matters see the difference. a lot. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I discussed this with the old uh, Ingvar Kamprad. He sadly passed away, but yeah. he built up Ikea. You yeah, know, Ikea, founder of Ikea. Yeah. Ikea, as I say. Yeah. And he, in Swedish, it's called Ikea. Yeah. And... Uh, and uh, he and I were partners in many ventures. Yes. And, and he very much said exactly the same. Yeah. It's a matter of bringing in that kind of diversity. Yeah. In the best of sense. Yeah. Nationalities, female and male. Yeah. Age difference. This, and, uh, and so on. So different uh, backgrounds. I, I remember also, um, I was um, for many years a uh, consultant to... Ellen Erickson, uh -huh. and, and as you know, they are the world's number one in, in base stations. Sure, in virtual, for mobile networks. Mobile and, network base stations. Yeah. And, and the head of uh, the division then, yeah. it, it, that became the Ericsson. Yes. yes. But at that time, it wasn't. Yeah. He, he was a photographer by background, huh. not PhD yes. from the Royal Technical University <laughs> in Stockholm. There you go. But he was a photographer. Yeah. 
So, so diversity in terms of gender, diversity in terms of nationality, diversity in terms of uh, academic background. You, you mentioned age, and I, and I can't yes. let this opportunity pass because I think when we think of diversity, appropriately, we think about gender, we think about race and ethnicity. I'm not sure we talk about age enough. No, and so no. Maybe that's an opportunity to go back briefly to the programs that you did. Um, I, I assume you were not among the youngest participants no, in the programs. I, I, I'm, I'm in this. I'm shamefully aware of <laughs> I'm the so, old, so talk by a little, far the oldest. <laughs> so, so I'm sure it took people about 30 seconds to figure out how fortunate they were that you were there with your enthusiasm and your experience. But talk a little bit about how age diversity is important for, for learning, or at least how you experienced it in the program? Well, first of all, I think uh, my colleagues, yeah. my fellow learners, yeah. they seem to be very polite. So yes. they didn't tell me that yeah. I was a... By the way, the old... faculty, the professors were terrified, okay, that you were there. <laughs> okay, but... thank you. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> but, but, but anyway... Um, I, I, and I by that, I just mean because they're nervous. I mean, okay. that's what I meant thank by you, that. Thank you. you know, that's but, what I meant. But I was, yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of asked myself, you know, uh, what, what does all of this mean? Um, you know, I have perhaps for too long been, hang, been hanging on to uh, the leadership of uh, yeah. the SU Gustav Invest. Yeah. That's now run by my son and daughter and my son in law, etc. But but I'm still the chairman of the board. Maybe I shouldn't be. But, um, you know, for me, it was a real eye-opener to uh, go back and do some rereading of history yeah. and, and realize that, oh, with all his faults, somebody like Napoleon yeah. was very young. And yeah. yes. He did all this. And, yes. and, you know, he did a lot of bad things. But when you think about the legal system that you yes, put in, sure. including how this country, Switzerland, sure. is managed, yes. uh, it was fantastic. Yeah. And, you know, he was only in his 30s. Yes. By the way, he had a very important insight. Um, did you know about that, how he no. dealt with the mail? No. He didn't have the computer during yeah. those yeah. days. Yeah. So he piled up the mail day after day after day, and he only read the, the pile that was three weeks old. And he said, by that time, also, it was gone. <laughs> there you go. So, so we deal with that on the, That's you right. know. And, and I'm asking myself, uh, maybe some of the youngsters are a little too eager to respond. Right away. Uh, right away. Yes. But, uh, that's not to the point. But really, properly done, we yeah. should allow the young people to come in earlier, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. So people are capable of a lot at a young age, absolutely. But you never cease to be excited about learning if you have the right mindset, and then bringing people together. Uh, no, I, and that's a good way exciting. to say say it, David. I don't think it's fair that because of age you are no longer allowed to be at the table. Yeah, I yeah. I feel okay, of course. But uh, I I think that that's when I become should we say dogmatic yeah. and say, or uh, normal sign, yeah. as you yes. say in Germany. Or there's got to be order, yes. <laughs> that, that's not, yes. then it's all over. Yeah, there you go. So, so Anthony is asking a question about how is feedback from participants who've applied IMD learnings in their leadership or decision-making journey? I guess it's not easy to measure. So maybe I'll, I'll uh, take a stab at this one, Anthony, and yeah. then you can contribute to this as well. You know, our... Our, our motto um, at, uh, at IMD is, is real learning, real impact. And so the first thing to note is, you know, it's not teaching, it's learning, because what matters is what people learn. But it's not just learning because it's pleasurable. It's also about the impact that that learning has. And so one of the things that we do, um, and I don't know if other institutions do this, of course, we send you a course evaluation at the end of the program and we ask questions about what did you learn and how was it and did it meet your goals and how impactful was it for you but then four months later we'll send you another survey and you might be just about to receive them from the programs you did and we say it's been four months reflect on your journey what are you still doing in your job um you know how how much did your 
behavior change. And we do the whole thing again a year later, 12 months later, we ask again, different set of questions on impact. Now, it's self-reported. And so there, Anthony is correct. You know, ideally, you would want to validate this with having uh, sort of peer assessments of impact. But I think at IMD, we, we, we focus a lot on making sure that the learnings last. And we take it upon ourselves as educators to make sure we don't just put together a really exciting week or a virtual journey, but that, you know, months and years after the program or the intervention, you know, people can still identify the difference that it made. Um, maybe talk a little bit about how you helped focus the colleagues and the institution on this, this yes. notion of impact. Yes, uh, I, I think that, uh, as you said, real learning, real impact. Another way to say it is real world, real learning. Sure. And, 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 and you know, that's it, you know, that impact has to do with the real world. Yeah. And let me give you an example. Um, we are seeing now the, the uh, uh, terrible conflict going on between Ukraine and yeah. Russia. Yeah. And I don't want to comment more on that. It's, yeah. it's just amazing what that leads to in terms of inflation, yeah. and energy problems, yeah. and what have you. There's yeah. just no end to it. But one thing which, which is real world here, and the real impact is that uh, one of the donors of a professorship to IMD, uh, I will not mention his name, he, he owns a big uh, fleet of bulk carrier uh, ocean going ships. Mm -hmm. And he is now building ships where, should we say, the superstructure of the ships are in the very front mm -hmm. so that he can more better navigate the ships from. Uh, Odessa mm -hmm. through the Black Sea with all the mines and uh, all of that stuff. When you have the superstructure in the back, you, you, you simply don't that. have the overview enough. It's like sitting, being a pilot sitting yeah, in the yeah. back of the plane. Wow. So, so that's real world, real impact, yes. isn't it? Yes, yes. Oh, absolutely. I haven't, I haven't thought about yeah. that. I hadn't come to <laughs> this is that. maybe a ridiculous example. Well, no, it's not. But it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not because, again, um, you know, learning doesn't happen in isolation. It happens in a complex and ever-changing world. And so we need to be in dialogue with what is going on there. I mean, we have the luxury of being here at this beautiful place and sort of reflecting a little bit and slowing down a little bit. Uh, but it happens in the context of a of a very turbulent and challenged world. And, that's and, exactly right? it. And and that's our that's our primary matter. That's what yes. we're drawing on yes. when we're when we're learning. And, and and by the way, just to be clear, uh, this person in this yeah. Uh, yeah. perhaps trivial example, yeah. he has he has not only donated a professorship to yes. IMD, yeah. but he has taken many courses yes. from IMD. Yes. So he he would I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I think he would readily say that I am the inspired him. Sure. And to, has had some impact. To do this. Yeah. So, so we only have, unfortunately, a couple of minutes remaining. Um, where do you see education, particularly executive education, going next? You, you've, you've spoken about this book project that you have to sort of condense insights. You've mentioned some of the opportunities of combining the best of virtual learning with in-person learning. Um, fast forward, you know, what are some of the things that, uh, that you would expect to, uh, to change, um, in, in, when it comes to executive education or what are some of the trends, I suppose, that can give us a sense of where we're going? I, I, I think that there are basically four trends, uh, and IMD is doing well on the first three, okay. not on the fourth. All right. Uh, I, th I think, and the first three are, of course, Technology is uh, absolutely key. Yeah. And I think IMD is very much in the forefront yeah. to understand the virtual technology. Yeah. The second one is, maybe that should have been the first, the, the quality of the players on the football team. Yeah. You really have some of the best professors in the world here when it comes to understanding, yeah. for instance, uh, uh, modern finance. Yes. Yes. And of course, it's more than what they teach at yes. 
at the Booth School at, in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, the third thing is that you have this kind of global reach here in terms of participants. Yes. And, and you could call IMD in a sense a global meeting place. Sure. And the fourth thing, which I'm sorry to say, I don't think Good. IMD yet is measuring up, but uh, as well as it maybe will in the future, I think you will find many, an increasing number of executives saying that it has to be cost effective. Yeah. And cost effectiveness means that my company needs to be and the provider of executive learning. Yeah. So maybe trivial things such as overheads, how we organize ourselves here, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. These are important issues, yeah. increasingly going yeah. to be increasingly important issues yes. that uh, companies are going to ask. Yeah. Yeah, you probably already I, see. No, it. you're absolutely you're absolutely correct, and I think there there there's sort of two ways of looking at it, right? Any um, you know successful and ambi- ambitious business leader is always going to look, you know, can I get similar value at a lower price, right? So there is a cost consciousness, and and it's a competitive world, and so clearly that's the case. But of course, at the same time, you know, we want to broaden access to education. Absolutely. That's true across the board Absolutely. and it's true for executive education as well you shouldn't just have a very small number off let's face it historically uh you know sort of white male senior leaders no, no, no. who benefit from some of this we want many more people to benefit I, I, from I, that i understand that no? but maybe i'm not totally clear in other words let me go back to yeah. the coach of the top british uh, top english football yeah. teams yes obviously they are paying huge amount of salaries yeah, for their players. Sure. Uh, frankly, between you and me, quite insane. So yes. it's, uh, or yes. the top yes. Spanish yes. or yes. Italian yes. or French or yes. what have you. Yes. But that seems to be it. Yes. I have no problems with that. Yeah, That's the way it should be. Sure. What I have problems with is, should we say, all of the extra. For instance, when I was taking OWP, yeah. I didn't like the fact that you had all kinds of portrait designers, all kinds of uh, music, all kinds of this and that. Yeah, I'm here to learn, and I need to run things efficiently in Estugal Study Invest, and I I appreciate that yeah. things are run efficiently here. Too. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand, and and so it's sort of the overhead, the bells and whistles. You know, what of that is really needed, but but let me pick up on this on this other issue as well, which is. Um, you know, what are the opportunities to broaden access to learning, to actually bring down the costs of some of what happens here, not just by 20% or 30% because we cut out some unnecessary bells and whistles, but say by 90% by, you know, using technology to broaden. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I I can do that. Yeah. Uh, I, when I left IMD, I uh, bought a campus outside Zurich. Yeah. And I built the Lagrange Institute, where I had no faculty. Yeah. But I brought faculty in yeah. uh, as needed. Yeah. By the way, none none from IMD yes. because I did not want to cherry pick yes. as a matter of ethics. Yes. And uh, uh, by that, I felt that I could bring, I could deliver almost the same quality, but at much lesser cost. Yes. And I felt that. Many faculty members, certainly during my time, maybe sitting along, sitting around quite a lot. Yeah. Not anymore, yeah. but at that time. Yes. And and then I was when I sold that to the Chinese to Shanghai. To Sibs, right? Sibs in yes. Shanghai. Yeah. Then I started the, the Lorange Institute, which not even had a campus. Yes. But all virtual learning. Yes. Yes. Virtual, virtual, virtual. Yes, yes. And that, that's now sold to IMD. It's back to right. the whole, the circle is closed. Yes. 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 But but these were efforts, David, to come up with top quality learning without the same cost base. Yes. And I have to say that, uh, as you, I said 20 seconds ago, the circle is now closed. Yes. I do realize that properly done, a faculty group like we have at the IMD yeah. is it essential. Yes. But at the same time, it is interesting to see that I could do quite a lot yes. 
both with the Lorange Institute and later with the Lorange Network. Yes, yes. So, yes, it I doesn't have that, to be either or. No, you and, absolutely and I right. Hope that Lorange Network, yeah. as part of IMD, yes, can be a real flourishing. I think so. I, we're we're incredibly excited about this because you know the people you've you've brought together in this community are are you know incredibly successful leaders, thoughtful leaders, and people who are committed to something that both of us are passionate about, which is learning and and, and lifelong learning. Absolutely. So so maybe in in closing, um, there are a number of people who have been engaged in in lifelong learning who are connected, but maybe some who um, you know haven't taken an IMD course or, you know, a course from, from, from a comparable institution. There may not be many, but there's some, um, sure. you know, so, so, so what's your advice to anybody who's sort of thinking, should I really take this time, make this investment? Um, what, what do you say to them? What, what I, I say is that uh, your executive challenge and your executive your executive mission is one that can best be uh, done you can best be successful yeah. if you if you are all the time able to should we say uh, lead based on uh, being positive having something more to give than you take yeah so executive Leadership is a matter of having something extra to give. Yeah. And, and for that reason, it's important that you also come to places like IMD yeah. to research your yes. batteries. Yes. But not in the sense that how can I learn this new thing, but recharge in the sense that you you see things in a better perspective. Interesting. So it's not the I don't know X, I need to go there and no. I need to learn that. There are a lot no. of resources available, no. but this idea that you got to, I'm just going to repeat the words because no. I think they're so yeah. appropriate, right? You got to recharge. That's right. And this is a place where you can do this by yeah. being stimulated, yeah. by connecting with new people, yeah, by yeah. learning cutting edge uh, things, but then really to bring them back to your organization to continue to lead with energy. and, and That's right. And so, so, you know, David, um, I've met a lot of leaders in my life. Yeah. And uh, frankly, for me, the asset test is, is this leader giving more than it takes? Yeah. Giving more to his or her organization, yeah. her or his organization, yes. than she or he takes. Yes. And, and, and to be able to continue to do that, you need to come to a place like IMD to recharge the batteries. So this is a perfect way to close because if I can think of leaders who do exactly that, who give more than take, then you come to mind. You know, Thank you've you. given <laughs> so much to IMD uh, and so much now to the Ranch Network. And now they've come together and we're thrilled about this. And, and you continue to, to challenge and inspire us. So thank you so much for taking the time this afternoon, uh, you know, having this dialogue, connecting with, uh, with old friends like Dan and, and new <laughs> friends that we made uh, over the past hour. And best of luck to you, Peter. Thank you very much, David. And best Thank of, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks.